Okay, so now let's say that we have a text file and we would like to use Python to access the contents of that file. So in our example, we have this text file that consists of the average temperatures for May through August. And what we would like to do now is understand how Python allows us to build what are called file objects and then use methods that exist on those file objects to access the data. And so the first thing that we have to do, we'll bring up the Python shell, is we have to create an object that represents this file. And the way that we do that is to use a function called open. The open function takes the name of the file as its parameter and it returns a reference to a file object. And so, for example, we could say in file will be a reference to the result of calling the open function on the file temps.txt. Now when I do that, if I just evaluate in file, notice that it tells me that in file is a text file using an ASCII encoding and the name of the file was temps.txt. That information is really not of much use to me as a user, as a programmer, but it is useful to know that Python did in fact find the file and it knows that that file exists as a collection of text. If we look at this pictorially, what we've just done is to create, once again, with an assignment statement, a variable called infile, which is a reference now to an object. This object represents the abstraction of what really is physically a data file out on the disk. And what we know, as with any object, the object has a value and it has methods that it can perform. So the value of this object is really out on disk someplace, there is a sequence of characters stored magnetically somehow in bit form. And now what we want to look at are the different methods that we can use to access this file. And there are a number of them. The first one we're going to look at is a method that is referred to as read. The read method allows me to access the entire contents of the file as one long string. So for example, if I say in file, which is the name of the reference, the name of the file object, I would like to perform the read method of that file. What will be returned is a single string consisting basically of all the characters that I typed in originally. However, if you look at that string, you will notice something interesting, and that is that it contains M A Y space 6 0. But then when we get to the point where there would have been a carriage return, we see this new funny character, slash n. Slash n is actually the escape sequence for what is called the new line character. So every time I hit a carriage return as I was typing in this text, what was actually placed into the text file was a representation of a new line character. And in Python, as well as many other programming languages, that new line character is uh, represented as a slash n. And so every time we see those carriage returns showing up, we really have a slash n character in our text stream. Now, the new line character, just like spaces, shows up really as white space. And so what that means is that if I wanted to take this text, this line, this string, and divide it up into its pieces, I could very easily do that with the split method. So, for example, I could say data line is going to be the result of reading the file. But now let's look at what happened. 
data line contains the empty string. Why doesn't it return the same value it had before? Now we see something else that's very important related to files. Files always maintain their current position. What I mean by that is that when you read from a file, you are moving through the file in a designated location. And every time you read more data from the file, you move this, what, are, what is called a file pointer or a file marker, forward. And so when we did the initial read, we read the data, and that moved the file pointer to the very end of the file. The next time we do a read, there's nothing left to read. And so the data line ends up being empty. So we have to be careful when we read data from a file, if we want to go back and read the file again, we have to make sure that we reopen the file. So now, to solve this problem, what I'm going to do is go back and perform the open again. So I'll go back and say in file is again a reference to the file temps.txt. Now what that does is it resets and reopens the file with the file marker at the very beginning of the file. Now, if I read that data and store it as a string referenced by data line. So data line is a reference to the result of reading the entire contents of the file. Now data line is that string. Now once again the file marker has moved to the end. But now I've got the data. And of course now what I could do is using the split method of the string I could break up that data line and in fact, you can see that I start to get now the contents of that file as individual pieces. The string May, the string 60, the string June, the string 68, and so on. Now, that might be what I want, but more than likely, what I really would like to do here is not read the data as one long line, but rather think about the data as a sequence of one line at a time. And so instead of using the read method, I could make use of another method called read lines. In order to use that, I'll reopen the file once again, and this time I will say in file dot read lines. Notice when I do that, the result is now a list of strings, where each string consists of the characters that made up one line of the file. So the first line was MAY space 60 new line. The second line of the file was JUNE space 68 new line. And so this gives me a list of four strings, each string representing one line. And of course, I could go through that list of strings, I could take each string. I could split the string, and now I would have the ability to process line by line within the file. There is a third method for reading from a file, and again, I'll go back and reset the file again. And that is that I could simply read one line from the file. So if I do a read line, it gives me back simply the next line. And if I do that again, I get the next line of the file, and so on. So from the standpoint of methods that exist on a text file, I can either read the entire file, or I can read the entire file as a list of lines, or I can read one line at a time. Any of those will allow me to process the file and get at the contents of those characters.